Huh? Meet any pretty girls they've, up they've there? Got, no, they don't have any girls over at OU. You need to go over there and see it. There are none. Man, I don't want to go there. Just, man. just every, just, just, yeah. You know. Anyway, this is, this is, this is uh, a lecture for my. This is eighth hour. Eighth hour on the twentieth of April. Anyway, uh, so you need to get this timeline in your mind. Uh, the armistice was signed. Well, try this. The armistice, the armistice was signed. And the Treaty of Versailles and the armistice are two different things. The armistice was signed on the uh, uh, 11th of November, 1918, the 11th day of the 11th month of the 11th hour. And all that was was a cease, well, it was a ceasefire. Nobody went home. Nobody retreated. They just stayed in the same position they were. But the shooting stopped. But then in January, here's November, December, January, eight weeks later, in January of 1919, the big four, the leaders of the four winning nations of the war, met at a palace outside of Paris called Versailles. And they wrote the treaty that ended the war. And since it was written at Versailles, it was called the Treaty of Versailles. And that's the treaty that ended World War I. And four men wrote that treaty. And there they are. There's the Woodrow Wilson, represented the United States. Uh, Vittorio Orlando, we talked about this guy. Yeah. Vittorio Orlando, he comes to collect that seaport he was promised and doesn't get it. He was uh, from Italy. Uh, there's Clemenceau, the tiger. Uh, he wants to crush Germany. That's his sole concern. And there's David Lloyd George. Uh, and he wants reparations. He wants, to, he wants the Germans to pay for the war, for all the death and destruction that he said that the Germans ca uh, caused. And so they set, about, they set about to write the treaty. And it takes them, get this down, from January to June, from January until June of 1918, uh, 1919, excuse me, to write this treaty. And of course, uh, Clemenceau and Wilson, I think this is where we left off yesterday, Clemenceau and Wilson argue. They're at each other's throats the whole time that this conference is going on. Wilson is over there talking about a just and lasting peace for all nations. Uh, Wilson, is, uh, or Wilson is talking about that. Clemenceau is talking about crushing Germany, making sure that Germany is no longer a military power. Uh, and there are really violent clashes between the two. <coughs> as, as I said yesterday, Clemenceau's an old man. But, you know, a couple of times it seemed like he was going to jump across the table and attack Wilson. Um, you know, Wilson threatened to go home. He got sick of it. And he does go home for a couple of weeks. Clemenceau threatened to go home, which was just down the road in Paris. But he left the conference, and then he came back, and he's out walking in the garden at Versailles, and an anarchist stepped out and shot him. And they dig the bullet out, and three days later, he's back at the conference screaming at Wilson. Up well, to an anarchist that shot him. Huh? Up to an anarchist that It shot was him. an anarchist, yes. Is that what you said? Yeah, what happened to him after he shot him? Uh, probably he was put in prison. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I've never read that, but... Uh, Anyway, it took them six months, get this down, it took them six months to write this treaty. And, of course, they have been roundly criticized ever since. And I would love to take Woodrow Wilson to task because, along with Thomas Jefferson, he's one of my least favorite presidents. Uh, but it wouldn't be right because these men did the best they could. I don't think there, was, uh, there were four people alive on the earth then or now who could have gone into that room, sat down, and written a better treaty than they did. Uh, they had an impossible task, uh, and they probably did the best that they could do, probably did the best that anyone could do. Look, these guys had to tear down nations and build new nations and tear down old empires, and they had to just sit in that room for six months, and they had to decide the fate of 400 million people, and that's no easy task. <coughs> I have been, at, uh, when, you know, just compare that to the monumental things we do around here. I've been to meetings where they're trying to decide the theme for the homecoming flow. Uh, and it's the biggest fiasco you ever saw. It's absolute chaos. I think friendships probably end over that. Well, I want to whip the Wildcats and you said it's not. Yeah. You know, over something 
building a homecoming float. Imagine what these guys had to do. They've got to decide the fate of over 400 million people and create a new Europe. And they did create a new Europe. They made a couple of bad mistakes. Number one, they didn't invite Russia. I've got some of this down. They didn't invite Russia. Uh, look at this. You, you know, how in the world can you even begin to imagine you could decide the fate of Europe and leave out Russia? Who else did they did not invite? Germany. Germany. Look at that. Germany. How in the world can you talk about the future of Europe and just leave Germany, Germany completely out of the equation? Okay. But, but they did. They didn't want Germany because Germany was on the losing side. They didn't want Russia because Russia had become communist and they didn't want any communists to have anything to say about this. Well, the final treaty, get this down, was 230 pages long. It's a book. It's not one, it's not one piece of paper. It's 230 pages long. The Germans had read Wilson's 14 points, and the Germans expected that the final treaty would look like Wilson's 14 points, but it had it didn't. There was only one thing that they included from Wilson's 14 points, and the only reason they included this in the treaty was to get Wilson to go along. They felt like they had to have Wilson and the support of the United States for the treaty to be successful. So what, what thing down at the very end of the treaty, wagging his crippled tail, did they put in there to, break, to get Wilson to support the treaty? The League of Nations. And if you don't have that down, get it down. The League of Nations. And Wilson signed the treaty. He didn't think it was a good treaty. But he said this. He said, as long as there is a League of Nations, the League of Nations will settle any problem raised by this this treaty uh and so uh you know this the, what this treaty did get this down is that it crushed germany it crushed germany it sowed the seeds for the rise of adolf hitler in world war ii again i will repeat to you hitler was hitler was uh hitler was uh, uh elected on one promise not that he would kill jews not that he would start a war he was elected on one promise and that was that he would destroy the treaty of versailles and he did destroy the Treaty of Versailles. Uh, well, that, that's, a, that's a long story, but he will destroy, he will literally destroy the Treaty of Versailles and cause the Second World War in the process. And so the Treaty of Versailles is one of the greatest failures in history. But I want you to know the major points of the Treaty of Versailles. So get these things down. So I, I don't want you to just know there was a Treaty of Versailles. I want you to have some idea of what it said. And here it is. Get this down. Number one, we're just going to do this one, two, three, four. So this is what the Treaty of Versailles said. Number one, it took, well, write this down. It created modern Europe. The Treaty of Versailles created modern Europe. That's, look at this map real quick. I'll repeat that. Look at this map. That's what Europe looked like when the Versailles Peace Conference started, and that's what it looked like after. And today, if you and your pals, I would wait until the war in the Ukraine is over, but if you and your pals want to hitchhike across, want to hitchhike across Europe, okay, if you want to go across Europe, um, <clears throat> the Europe that you cross will essentially be the same one that was cre created at Versailles. There's no longer a Czechoslovakia. You were talking about Slovakia a while ago. There's no longer a Czechoslovakia. It divided into two parts. This is Slovakia, and that is the Czech Republic. Uh, there's no longer a Yugoslavia that's broken into five or six countries. But essentially, the Europe that was created by the Treaty of Versailles is still there. And there and there it is. There's the Europe that was created by the Treaty. So that's the first thing it did. It created modern Europe. Second thing, get this down. It took territory away from Germany. Get that down. It took territory away from Germany. In fact, it took three specific pieces of territory, and I want you to know those. On your next test, you will see them. So let's go right here. Take a look at that. Whoops. Back. Everybody look up here. You see that? You see that little strip of territory right there? Yes? Talk yes, to me. Sir. Does everybody see that? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. That's called, write this down, that's called the Rhineland. And the Rhineland is on the border of France and Germany. Okay. That was taken from Germany, and it was made into a neutral zone, okay? Uh, or a demilitarized, get all this down, a demilitarized. If you demilitarize something, you take all the military out of it. <clears throat> the French insisted on that. Germany had invaded them twice, 
1871 and 1914, and they said, we want that as a demilitarized zone. We no longer want Germany to be able to use the Rhineland to invade France. So that was taken away from Germany. Get this down. That's in 1919. 29, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4. 15 years later, get this down, 15 years later, 1919, 15 years later, Hitler, who was by then the dictator of Germany, in 15 years, he's the dictator of Germany, he will take that. He will send his tanks and his army and his air force in, and they will. he will take the Rhineland. Okay? That's the first piece of territory that Adolf Hitler ever conquered. Get that down. Before it's over, he's going to have all that that you see up there, except England. <clears throat> but the very first territory that he ever took was right there, the Rhineland. And by the way, there was a League of Nations, and the League of Nations protested and said, you can't do that. And Hitler said, all in the world that I'm doing is I'm taking, I'm... I'm... Mr. Thompson, we need to code a pageant in the office for checkout. Okay. Hitler said, all in the world that I'm doing is taking back territory <coughs> that was stolen from Germany by the Treaty of Versailles. You cannot separate the rise of Hitler from the Treaty of Versailles. Okay? It's just like today. In 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed. The Cold War ended. Russia, The Soviet Union ceased to exist, and it became Russia again. And all of this territory right here, every Czechoslovakia, Poland, Romania, Hungary, all of that had been controlled by the Soviet Union, and they all became independent countries, including the Ukraine. And now Vladimir Putin, you know, he's invaded, he's invaded and he's taken Crimea. He's taken a little region here called Georgia, which is why we're Stalin. That was his home country. And now he's taking the Ukraine, or he's attacked the Ukraine. He's not taking it. But when they said to him, you know, you, when the United Nations and when NATO and other groups said you can't do that, he said, all of the world I'm doing, is I'm taking back territory that was taken from us when the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991. I'm not saying that Vladimir Putin is Hitler. You know, that's that's the most common thing in the world. If you don't like somebody, you say they're Hitler. You know, they, I, I have no doubt that someone's standing in front of the White House right now with a picture of Joe Biden, and he's got a little mustache, like, and it's saying Joe Biden is Hitler. And they did it for Trump, and they, and they did it for Obama. Every politician we don't like is Hitler. Listen. There's only one Hitler, only one, okay? Vladimir Putin wouldn't make a wart on Adolf Hitler's nose, okay? But <coughs> he has taken a playbook, of a page, I mean, from Hitler's old playbook, and he's using the same excuse. In 1934, Hitler said, this was stolen from us. I'm going to take it back. And Vladimir Putin is saying the same thing today. That's one of the reasons that he feels justified in invading the Ukraine. Uh, next, get this down. Uh, the Treaty of Versailles created that country right there. Write it down. That is Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia. What? That country no longer exists. It's divided today into Slovakia and the Czech Republic. But in 1919, look at this. The, the Treaty of Versailles took territory from Poland and Romania and Hungary and Austria and Germany, and it created that long, narrow country, Czechoslovakia. And look at this. It took that part of Germany right there. Look at that. That's a pretty good chunk of Germany to create Czechoslovakia. And by the way, the people who lived there were Germans. They spoke German. They had German traditions and customs. Uh, but it was taken away from Germany in 1919. That piece of territory, and learn this because you're going to see it again, it was called the Sudetenland. The Sudetenland. And it's easy to spell, Sudetenland. You need to break things in syllables. They took that from Germany. Just think about that. One, one day these people were Germans, and the next day they were Czechoslovakians. That was in 1919. In 1938, get this down, Hitler took it back. And he got this down. It almost took, he almost took, he almost caused World War II a year early by taking the Sudetenland. And when all of the other European nations protested and said, you can't do that, he said, all I'm doing is taking back territory that was stolen from us by the Treaty of Versailles. You can't separate Hitler from the Treaty of Versailles. And finally this, get it down. The port of Danzig, okay? 
often called the Danzig Corridor. The Danzig Corridor. See that? Can you see that little piece of white up there? This wing oak? Can you see that right there? Okay, can you all see that? Look, look at this. All of this. You see that yellow there? Before World War I, all of that was part of Germany. But when the war was over, they looked at Poland here, and they said Poland is landlocked. Poland doesn't have access to the sea. So, they, so the Treaty of Versailles took that little strip of territory right there away from Germany and gave it to Poland. Okay? That was in 1919. In 1939... A lone German plane on September 1st, 1939 at 5.30 in the morning flew across over to the Danzig corner and dropped a bomb there, and that was the beginning of World War II. You can go stand in the spot where world, one German plane, one pilot, one bomb, and that kicked off a war that lasted six years, destroyed much of Asia, much of Europe, and killed 70 million people in six years. 70 million people in six years. And it started right there in the Danzig Corridor. Uh, Hitler taking that back. <coughs> and again, <coughs> he said it's ours. <coughs> this god-awful treaty took it away from us. But in reality, that is our territory. And I'm just taking back what the Treaty of Versailles took away from us. All right, get this down. So that's, that's the first part. It took territory away from Germany. Get this down. The second part of the Treaty of Versailles, write this down, was that it um, disarmed Germany, disarmed. The German army was reduced to 100,000 men. They couldn't have more than 100,000 men. That's a pretty small army. And then the Germans had to destroy their own air force. These planes were made out of wood. And they literally had the, the pilots literally had to take axes out there and chop them into kindling, chop them to pieces. And then their Navy, 50 ships, get this down, 50 ships. Let's see if I can move this down here. Yeah, that, whoops. 50 ships. Well, uh, well, I mix it. Just what I wanted. You don't know I mix it? I voted for it twice. I don't like Nixon. Of course you don't. We can say things. Everybody got to take a break while I'm trying to find this. I got to put some water on my face. What for? I feel a trap. I like tired and stuff. Well, what is that? That's my next impersonation. No, don't do that. Where do you think? Hey, look at me. Where do you think you are that you can do stuff like that? You need to grow up. Yes, sir. You don't have to constantly be drawing attention to yourself. That's a sign of immaturity in case no one ever told you that. I'm telling you that. I'm doing you a favor so you won't embarrass yourself somewhere else and not even know it. Well, I don't know if I'll ever find it. It's right there. Mm, there nice just a minute. Now, I want to come down here and get this work. It's just not going to work. It's worked all day. Huh. Well, anyway. Well, anyway, I can show you on this. I thought it's some trash. So they just wait. They have to this they they uh, have to destroy their air force. Their army can only have a hundred thousand men. They're gonna be disarmed. Uh, and then they've got their Navy, and there were 50, at least 50 ships. A lot of them were battleships, and they have to sail their battleships uh, out of the Baltic Sea. You might recall that the British had blockaded that early in the war, and the Germans, the German Navy had been blockaded there in the Baltic Sea. 
So here was the plan. The uh, Germans, there we go. The Germans had to sail their fleet out of the Baltic Sea up here to a place called Scapa Flow, just north of Scotland. And the British Navy would be there waiting on them. And the British didn't trust them. They thought at the last minute the Germans might try some trick. So they had their fleet lined up with all their guns pointed at the Germans. And the German fleet would come sailing in and drop anchor. And then the British would send crews over to take over those German ships. And those same boats would bring back the German crewmen and they would be loaded on British ships and they would be taken back to Germany. And then the German fleet would be sailed to England. Uh, and so that's the way it was supposed to work. And on the morning that this exchange was supposed to take place, the British fleet, like I say, was there with all of their guns pointed at the German Navy. The German Navy sails up and they dropped anchor. But just before they start to abandon their ships, they just couldn't bring, this is the Germans, they just could not bring themselves to turn their Navy over to the uh, British and so as they were getting off the ships, they opened up the valves and they sunk their own fleet. If you want to see the German Imperial fleet today, it's at the bottom of the North Sea off Scapa Flow, Scotland. They sunk their navy uh, rather than turn it over to the British. So they were completely disarmed and left defenseless. Get this down as well. This is the Treaty of Versailles I'm talking about. Get this down. The Germans were forced to pay reparations. <laughs> Write this down. The Germans were forced to pay reparations. <clears throat> reparations, you know, the word repair maybe comes from reparations. Uh, again, if you, you know, drive your Volkswagen through the courthouse lobby and destroy a bunch of it, the judge will probably send you to some jail time and he'll give you a fine. But he's also going to say you have to pay reparations. You have to repair what you've done. Uh, well, the uh, British and the French and the Americans and the Italians in the Treaty of Versailles, said to the Germans, you're going to have to pay for this war. You're going to have to pay for all the deaths and all the destruction that you caused. Uh, and they set the price at $132 billion, uh, excuse me, 132 billion gold Reichsmarks. Today, if you go to Europe, the, the Germans use the euro like uh, almost every country except England. They use the euro. Uh, did they ever pay it off? Hmm? Did they ever pay it off? Uh, uh, yes, they did. The answer to that is yes. But to, I just want you to know that, it, and this was going to be paid back in gold. It's $132 billion in gold. We're not talking about paper money here. Uh, and so to, this would be several, in today's money, this would be several trillion dollars that the Germans owed. Uh, and they did pay it off. When Hitler comes to power in 1933, he cancels it. But Hitler's only around for about 12 years. And when he's destroyed by World War II, the Germans picked up the payments. What do you think the last year was of the payment, the last payment they made? 1990. How much? 2018. 2018? That's an educated guess. That's not it. How much? 1990. What? 1990. 1990? Yeah. Now you're, you're hitting all around. 1999. That's how long. We all were born, what, in 2004 or 5? Four, four, any fives here? Sixes. There's only two fours. Sevens, eights, fifteens. Okay, yeah. Well, just shortly before you all made your appearance on the earth, the Germans finally paid off the war reparations bill. That's a long time. Uh, 19, 1999. By the way, what was the problem with the Germans paying $132 billion? They didn't have it. They're broke. They don't have any money. So they set up a payment plan, and every year, they had to pay so much gold to the Allied nations, okay? So much gold to the Allied nations. And then get this down. The Germans had to accept war guilt very quickly. The Germans had to say they started the war. Is that true? No. Yeah. No. Who started it? Austria. Who? Austria. The Austrians. And when they had declared war on Bosnia? Oh, yeah. What about Bosnia killing that Austrian archduke? Did Bosnia start it? Or was it the Russians? They said, we're coming to the aid of the Bosnians, but instead they just wanted access to the sea. Or was it the British who just wanted to demolish the Germans? Or the Germans who just wanted to demolish the French? Or the French who said, we'll get the British to help us and we'll demolish the Germans? Whose fault was it? All of these, didn't all of these have ulterior motives? Yes. Except for one country. Who was that? The United States. And, and by the way, we didn't have time to have ulterior motives. We didn't get there six months before the war was over. So anyway, yeah. 
Uh, all, uh, yes. What happened to Austria? I mean, my dude. It was broken up. See that? Look at that. Kind of like Turkey, Romania. Yeah, like the Ottoman Empire. There is the Austro. There is it. See what happened to it? Broken up to all those countries. Like, did they even fight in war? Yes, they fought. Yeah, I didn't mention them much, but yeah, they fought. They fought. And they fought a lot against the Italians, okay, and the Italians against them. But that wasn't nearly as bloody as the British and the French against the Germans. What was Canada doing all this time? During they were sending, well, Canada had been, they had been part of the British Empire. Uh, they were now part of the British Commonwealth, and they sent troops, just like Australia sent a lot of troops. Uh, all these former nations who had been part of the British Empire, yeah, they sent for king and country. You understand that Queen Elizabeth of England is still the Queen of Canada today. She is? And she is the Queen of Australia today, right now. Yeah. They're independent countries. They're no longer part of but they recognize her as the Queen. Anyway. <coughs> anyway. Um, the uh, Germans had to sign a piece of paper saying they started the war. Let me tell you something. There have been 21,000 books written on who started World War I. Not World War I, just who started it. If I brought 10 historians in here and said who started World War I, you'd get 12 different answers. There's enough blame to go around. But Germany was forced to sign that treaty and say we started the war. We started the war. Who do you think started in your opinion? Well, you know, I just, that's a good question. I just start, I just read a book by a British historian. He's a great historian. He's so great, I can't remember his name right now. But anyway, he wrote a book on World War I. This British guy, and you know who he said started? He said World War I would have never happened if England would not have gone to help Belgium. If England had just stayed out of it, the war would have fizzled out. So he says it's his home country's fault. England started World War I. Of course that's the latest people. book. That's the latest book. Yeah. Do you believe that? No. Every, you know, well, I mean, I see his point, but still, you know, I mean, I, I can come up with the same thing about France, Germany, Russia. No. Uh, if you ask me what caused it, the series of alliances. That's all. They just all kicked in. Yeah. Yeah. All, everybody knew just one little dispute and the world's at war. There was a little dispute and Austrian Austrian Duke got shot in, in Sarajevo. And all the alliances kicked in within th two months. Yeah. Anyway, they also get this down quickly, and we'll have to finish this tomorrow, but uh, <laughs> they also gave Germany a new government. They also gave Germany a new government. What is the capital of Germany then and now? Berlin. Berlin. The Treaty of Versailles said Berlin is no longer your capital. This isn't the German people deciding this. This is these big four. Berlin is no longer your capital. And they moved the German capital to a city south of Berlin called Weimar. The Germans pronounced those W's like a V. Weimar, the Weimar, and they created the Weimar Republic. The Kaiser was forced to abdicate. That means give up power. Write all this down. The Kaiser was forced to abdicate, give up power. They no longer now had a king. Now they were a republic, just like the United States, the Kaiser. And this government took effect in 1919. Germans didn't have any say about this. It took effect in 1919, and it lasted until 1931. 33, who destroyed it? Hitler. Hitler. Hitler's elected in 32. He takes power in 33. That's it for the good old Weimar Republic. It, it was... Scary. Huh? He became a dictator. Yeah. He was. Uh, listen, if you write a bus, leave quiet. I'm not done yet. Take everything with you. So Germany became Germany became the Weimar Republic. You know, we're a republic. Their republic lasted what? 29, 31, 14 years. And then it was gone. It never was popular. It never was strong. It was weak. 
<clears throat> but you look at our republic today, and we have a strong government. We have a strong republic. We started out as a small, weak country with 13 states, and now we're the most powerful nation on earth, the wealthiest nation on earth. We are a republic. And there are a lot of reasons that our republic has survived and flourished. There are a lot of reasons for that. But one of the main reasons is, is that our government came from us. We elected 55 men in 1787 to go sit in Philadelphia, 55 men representing all 13 states, and they wrote this. This didn't come from some foreign power. This originated, this is USA. This originated in the United States. And it has, and that's one of the reasons this government wasn't forced on us. We created it. And by the way, it had to be approved by a vote of the people, and they approved it. So it came from us. This government is forced on Germany. That government is forced on Germany. They have very little say in it. And when you do that to people, it rarely works out. You know, we spent, 20, just to update you, we spent, the United States spent 20 years trying to impose democracy on the people of Afghanistan, and how has that worked out? It ain't not well. We spent, from 1960, we spent eight years trying to create a democracy in South Vietnam, when the South Vietnamese people could not have, for the most part, could not have cared less. How'd that work out? And on and on you could go. Governments imposed from the outside rarely, if ever, work. This one came from us, and it's worked. Uh, is there more liberty in this country today than on the day that the ink was drying on the signatures of this? Yes. There sure is. And 10 years from now, there will be even more liberty. And 20 years from now, there will be, if we follow this, there will be even more. This expands liberty. It expands liberty. So... Uh, Anyway, write this down. When we come back tomorrow, that's where I want to take it up. Uh, when we come back tomorrow, um, we'll start with June 28th, June 28th, 1919. June 28th, 1919. Thank you.